Hello everyone, Master Z on 1201 here, and in this video we'll be going over the release log for HardOps 987 underscore 16. The model pictured is from my robot course that was released recently that will be linked in the description. I hope users pick it up. So for this update, the big things is that set origin now has bounds. You can set your render from LookDev without even having to enter LookDev Plus. You can place objects on the floor and dice now has view dice, which has been long awaited. There's also been a lot done with small stuff, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and talk about what's new in this update. So to demonstrate set origins in a contained fashion, let's just use box cutter. I'll press D and we'll switch over to slice and I'm gonna choose apply slices, which means that whenever I perform a slice, that slice will be applied. So now this cut is its own separate piece. However, we see that the origin is actually still in the same location as the original target that we cut it from. So you can press Q, go to Mesh Tools, and choose Set Origin. And just by clicking a dot on a face, you can specify where you want your origin. But even better is you can click and drag from one dot to another and basically specify your axis. You can even hold Alt in order to set your midpoint to be the alternative of either first or median. But even better is you can hold Shift while you're using Set Origin and basically keep the tool active and do something like press R to change your gizmo set to be only rotation. And then by clicking and dragging and creating a line, you can actually specify the rotation of the line or the rotation of the shape that you're manipulating. So now we've specified that this is our Y axis but if I wanted to change that, I could just click and drag, take this down to a lower dot, and we see that now this is the x-axis, allowing me to perfectly mirror this and basically do what I would do to this without having to deal with all the rigmarole of setting up origin. So in a nutshell, this is the foundation behind what set origin sets out to do is just allow you to specify your origin on objects that normally would be a little more difficult. Another popular example is if we change ourselves over to static dots, we can roll over the dots to get alignment preview, which means that we can just cut off a corner and then by basically cutting off another corner using slice, we now have this little section. So if we wanted to deal with that corner, we could actually go to set origin, click and drag to the dot that we care about, and now we've specified the origin of this object, which means it will affect the objects that we cut into it whenever we try to do things like radials. So we have this object selected. We can press Alt X and mirror this across this object's origin, but we can also shift click radial array in order to radial array around this same corner that we're working in. So this is really the basic overview of set origin. So here we're looking at the subdivided result of my recent milk crate demo. And if we were to press Q and go under set origin, we see that this object has been subdivided so finely that trying to use a dot to set the origin is just completely out of the question. While we can set our origin, we're just not gonna get a very good origin from what we're looking at. So for this reason, pressing B will now allow you to set bounds on the object. And from there, you can actually set your origin based off of the keyboard calculation of the shape that you have selected, which can make it a lot easier for setting your origin point for a very heavy objects such as the ones that we're showing here. I have another file open as an example. This was a power wash motor from a previous topological study. If I were to select the end piece and we go to set origin, we see that there are so many points on this mesh that setting the origin would be a little bit impossible, but this is where we can press B and just clicking on the bound center for this particular face that is specified, we are able to quickly set its origin. With the next piece, we can go to set origin. We also see that once again, we have too many points to specify. So if we press B, we get something much more simplified. We click on the point, we've specified our origin. We can go to the next object. We see that there's way too many points for us to calculate this. So we press B and we see that it also takes the local rotation into consideration. But by pressing R, we could either specify if we want to specify the rotation or the location or the location and rotation. So just by clicking on the center face, we're able to specify just the location of it while keeping the rotation. So if we go back into this and we press B, we see that we still maintained our rotation because all we did was click on a face dot. You have to click and drag in order to create your directional vector for the rotation to be set. 
So let's click on set origin here and we see that we're also unable to affect this object if we press B just by grabbing that calculated center face dot we are able to easily set our origin to the center top face of this object. So selecting the final piece we can press Q, set origin. We see that there's really nowhere we can work with as far as setting our origin. In fact it gets a little bit slow because of how much geometry is present but we press B, we get bounds, we go back and we click our prime dot and we're done. And just like that, we can now set origins on very high poly objects, which was part of the goals with set origin. I still consider it fairly early in its infancy, but I hope users are able to find a lot of use out of this latest iteration. So when it comes to getting familiar with hops, it's as easy as clicking on the hops button and going to the drop down for key map. We see that under the key map listing that there's a hotkey of Alt V for viewport submenu. So by pressing Alt V, we can bring up the viewport submenu and we see this option for look dev plus. Generally clicking this will allow you to go in and begin scrolling through your various look dev environments in order to begin configuring exactly how you want your object to look dev. In fact, while you're inside the screen, you can press C to turn your background off and on. You can press V to turn off the visibility of your environment off and on. However, for the purpose of this, we'll have our visibility showing and we're just scrolling through environments until we find one that we like. For example, let's say I like this one. We'll just click and apply. And while we have options inside of LookDev to set it up to your render, we see that our render is actually set up to be like our LookDev. So this means that by pressing Alt-V, if we hover over LookDev Plus, we see that part of the tooltip is shift left clicking will copy the look dev settings over to render world. So let's go ahead and try that. So we shift click and we see that the render settings from look dev have now made it over to our actual render settings, thus simplifying the rendering process, just making it just a one click process. So in the event that you want to set your environment to be the same thing as look dev, you can now do it without having to even enter the look dev plus modal. New to this release is a new operator. I'll take this cube in edit mode and we'll just extrude this face and scale it just so we know exactly which one is our top. And if I were to take this object and just take it up in space, rotate it a couple of times, you know, just get the rotation really odd. Basically all we can do for this is select the face, press Q, go under ST3 mesh tools and there's a new option for a two floor. And we see that all it does is it takes the object by the face and places it on the floor. So to demonstrate dice in a traditional aspect, we will just cut this box, press Alt X to mirror to the other side, and then perform another cut, move it over, click and apply, perform another cut, and another cut. So as you know, with box cutter, it's easy breezy to get in and just begin cutting shapes. However, if we were to press Control A and do visual geometry to mesh, we see that if we go in edit mode and we try to add loop cuts using Control R, that we're not able to flow very far because the mesh is completely covered in ingons now. So in order to make this mesh able to be deformed, we added the ability for users to dice. However, this dice was just a means to an end and there were still other dices that were needing to be achieved in order for us to fully accomplish what dice has to offer. So once you activate dice, you're able to begin rolling loop cuts on your ingon geometry and then clicking, you'll be able to perform those cuts on this mesh using knife project. Right now in Blender 3.0, there's some weirdness happening with knife, so I definitely recommend using the LTS. But more interestingly with dice is if we press T, we can actually exit to twist, which means that now we have twisted the object in addition to dicing it, but we also ended up with some geometric issues. So let's press Control Z and just see if there's anything that can be done to mitigate it. And if we press Alt V and we look at the wireframe, the wireframe isn't actually looking that bad. But when we get in and we add the dice, we definitely want to make sure that we're not highlighting any incorrect edges because that's going to cause some issues. So let's try it again. We exit to twist, we click, and we see that now we actually have a much better flow happening with our geometry because we actually diced it in the correct area instead of letting it just double up on some areas causing a hotline. But in a nutshell, that's basically what DICE is for. DICE is just allowing you to loop cut geometry in a 3D mode. However, this update introduces 2D mode to DICE. So previously we discussed how you can press Q and go under Mesh Tools and activate DICE V2 and use it to DICE things on various axes and twist them. 
However, new to this version is you can now go to Dice V2, and by pressing V, you can activate what's called View Dice. And we see that as I move around the view, that the dice is always going to be adjusted to fit the selection, which was part of the criteria for this request and was a long time request. And I'm just so proud to see this finally a reality because while this looks a little strange, you might be wondering what you could possibly be using this for, that comes next. So if we press five, we can now look at things in orthographic, which makes view dice behave a lot better. Unlike the traditional dice, there is no Q button to change the algorithm because this uses its own system for 2D, meaning that whenever you click, it will just dice and be done. And if we look at this, we are able to see that we just diced it basically from this view. Let's alt lock it from this view and let's go into dice again. We'll press V and now we're able to basically roll our dice and the good thing about dice too is you can press tab and uncheck voxelize and from there actually begin dealing with the sections that are showing in earnest instead of having to deal with them always being voxelized. But voxelization is definitely the intended way to be using this because we want perfect boxes whenever we're using dice. But in the event that you do not, you're also able to uncheck it in the expanded UI as well as press B to toggle it off and adjust the segments. Another thing important to note is that if we were to collapse this, Pressing X doesn't actually toggle X off, or pressing Y doesn't actually toggle Y off. What it does is it sets the segments to one, meaning that you can just roll the wheel and begin getting your segments back. So let's say I didn't want Y sections. Well, I could just press Y, and now X has been set to one, meaning that Y is all that's left. So if I just begin rolling the wheel, we see that we're able to continue adding sections to the Y. If we press X, we have now set Y to one, meaning that now when we scroll, we're able to bring back both series of sections. So we'll press Y again, which will isolate it, disabling X. And here we're able to roll the wheel and begin adjusting how many X sections we want to add to this mesh. And that in a nutshell is view, view dice just on the fly, just how you would normally be using it, at least in its most basic context. But let's bring it up with something a little more complex. So this was a part that I modeled previously, did an eight, a five hour video about. But if we were to select this face and we press Q and go to dice, we could press V and actually dice just this individual face, which will give us this as a result, meaning that the cleanup process is just us going in and just sliding points to their nearest junction. But just like that, we're able to force dice geo just in the middle of another mesh, which will definitely come in handy for the subdivision conversion process. When this feature was first added, I was immediately going to do a demo about it. However, for this particular event of subdivision, I've chosen to try to keep things more vanilla so we can appeal to more general users instead of everyone that's just using hard ops, but just a taste of what we have planned whenever it comes to dice. In fact, the next level of dice is already ready and I should probably just release it. However, for now, I just want to showcase, at least in a basic context, what we're going for with DICE as far as topological replacement, because filling faces can be a little difficult. And even with grid fill, you have to ensure that you have the equal amount of sections. So being able to just go in and project the flow that you want and then just take it to the nearest destinations will definitely be highly reductive whenever it comes to keystrokes for this particular aspect of the process. So right now I'm using it in a very fast context, just kind of showing it in action. But if I were to use this on an actual topological study, this would make some very short work of a lot of very large flat faces, especially faces that I hated working my way across. We now are able to just go in, select, press F in order to turn back into a singular face. And then from there, just basically replace the geometry that we're looking at with our own flow. So this is just the beginning of the next level of dice, but something that I'm very excited to be showing you guys because being able to just force geometry to be what you want is something that I consider to be impossible. In fact, just this morning I was having discussions about ge geometric replacement and the potential ways it could be done and the correct answer actually turned out to be none of my answers, but it's something that we'll be talking about next week, but at least just showing what it offers, at least as t in terms of topological assistance, view dice is definitely going to become an instant classic. So with that, we will be coming back to revisit this topic, but just to show a little bit in action about what it means. In fact, we could select this whole area 
And I'm just going to select these points, control plus to grow, F, dice, V, we'll just roll in, you know, about that many sections. And we're already off to a much better start than what we were looking at before, especially when it comes to solving. All we have to do is just deal with the edges. But when it comes to these big flat faces staring us in the face, they are soon to become a thing of the past. So at this time I have the console showing, which basically displays what it normally shows whenever you first open Hops. Even tells me that a newer version of Hops is available because I'm using an older version of Hard Ops. If I were to press spacebar, we bring up the spacebar search menu. And then if I go back to my system console, we see that there's now a bunch of console chatter is what I call it. So we see that these two are basically referring to autosave. However, voxel size, start frame, end frame, refers to us, which means that if you press Q and you go under settings, you're going to see under frame range options that there's some options for you to set your frame range. If you go under your voxel settings, you'll see that there's an option for you to specify your voxel settings. These were added a lot earlier in hard ops in which um, Blender wasn't throwing errors for this. However, Blender now throws errors whenever you press spacebar just for having certain options exposed inside of your Q menu. So for that reason, these options have been removed. Keep in mind that when it comes to adjusting your frame range, you can actually just click on it and bring up a operator F9 in order to set your frame range. So there's really no need to have the options exposed like they were here. Same with voxel size. With voxel size, if we want to adjust our voxel size, we can actually control click voxel size. And then from there, we can actually go in and adjust the voxelization. However, we see that it does require now that we go into sculpt mode in order for us to click on voxelize. And then from there, we can bring up the little grid and adjust the voxelization of our surface and from there even voxelize it, making it redundant for us to press Q and have to go under settings to basically do it. So for that reason, voxel size has been removed and the frame range options have now been removed from the latest version just to eliminate console chatter. And just to demonstrate what you can expect with the console as of underscore 16, if we press spacebar, we see that now whenever we click on toggle system console, we now have no options displaying that are related to us as far as errors go. So this one's related with mesh machine and these related displaying are actually connected with power save. So none of these errors are attached to us. You can use spacebar now and no longer have console chatter occur. So if we click the hops button, we can look at the drop down and we see that shift Q is the pie menu and Q is the menu. So generally in edit mode, when you press Q, you see these as your options. However, if you press shift Q, you see that the pie menu looks immensely different. So in this update, I had AR go in and actually add the options that were missing from the pie menu. So now we have options for reset access. We also have the main menu that shows for edit mode displaying for users whenever they're using the pie menu in edit mode. So some users have reported that the Pi menu was a little out of date, so now you have access to operations, but you also have access to all the options that generally show whenever it comes to edit mode, whenever it comes to using the Q Pi. When it comes to subdivision, there are some additional options under the advanced section that were previously unaccounted for in the helper. So as of this update, when you press control tilde and you go to the modifier helper, whenever you click on advanced, there's now proper options being displayed for all the options that are associated with subdivision, just expanding on subdivision to keep it congruent with what we see over in the add modifier area.